All right, today is October 18th, 2016, and we're looking at the Northeast Pacific Water Vapor Loop. Right now, at uh, we've got 8.26 p.m. In the foothills, we have a temperature of 57 degrees. The relative humidity is 64%. Uh, last night, around this time, it was around 84%. Uh, we've got a barometric pressure of 29.95, which has dropped. Uh, during this uh, period of time where we had uh, rain and that storm that was moving through the northwest, we had a constant 30 inches on the barometer. And as soon as that storm moved through, uh, our barometric pressure dropped, which is very odd. It should be just the opposite. Anyhow, uh, the dew point is uh, 45 degrees, and we had clear skies in the morning, and then we had a uh, heavy chemtrail spring in the afternoon. And uh, the forecast for the uh, Southern California areas for a dry, hot weather uh, by Thursday. It's going to warm up tomorrow, and by Thursday we're expecting uh, you know 90 degree temperatures, maybe even 100 degree temperatures in the valleys. And uh, we can see that the jet stream is still moving right into California, but we see a dark area opening up here, and that is where the transmitter right now is starting to uh, open up, and uh, they're. Uh, opening this area up with the RF power and we can see the evaporation right over this area. And typically what happens is that this uh, becomes very uh, cleared out like what we're seeing right over Hawaii. We have a sort of a blockade going on right here. And this is the same sort of effect we see uh, when they when they generate high pressure right over the uh, four corner states in the southwest, right over Nevada and a portion of these four corner states. And that high pressure flows to low pressure. And so depending on where they position that high pressure, we get uh, offshore winds, winds that are moving to the offshore direction. All right, so uh, that's part of the equation. We can see something happening here. We'll have to keep an eye on that because uh, right now it's just sort of a beginning. We see the very beginning stages of this uh, breakup of the jet stream. This, will, uh, this activity right here <clears throat> will uh, reroute this jet stream flow. Let's go take a look at the jet stream right now. We can see that uh, right here, we can see that everything is moving into uh, Oregon and uh, mostly in California, though, central and northern California. All right. So uh, also we have a, a storm uh, right here. This is a uh, powerful storm. Let's go take a look quickly at the uh, surface analysis map, and we can see that uh, this is a 975 millibar developing storm. The core of this system is, is going to wind back around and to, and to the south. We have a trough indicated. We have an occluded front right about through here. We have a cold front. The transmitter is generating uh, this uh, occluded front. We have heat being applied into the core. We'll take a look. Uh, on, we'll look at that here in a minute. We've got high pressure installed right off the west coast. That will uh, be pumped up. We have a developing gale right here uh, indicated, and that may have something to do with why we were seeing the chemtrails. And uh, so we'll keep an eye on what's going on here. Let's go back to the big map again, and we can see that developing storm uh, right here. And we see that uh, we've got a transmitter right in this area uh, deflecting the uh, jet stream. We can see that uh, this channel of uh, this blockade that's being that has been installed along here is uh, splitting the uh, the jet stream flow. It's cutting it off so that it will not wind into this uh, low pressure system up here. So we can see that happening right here. Also, there is a little bit of clockwise movement right in this area of the uh, core of the system. We see very little uh, rotation right here, and that's because of the transmitter right on top of this uh, core. And we see some very odd uh, straight edges. Uh, right up in here we'll take a look at that as well and here's the uh, rainbow map we got a disturbance down here with a 20 or 30 percent chance of hurricane formation we can see that jet stream flow moving right into uh, northern california and oregon and here's that storm look at these odd we've got a sort of a, a triangular shape triangular shaped uh feature there and then we have some series of straight edges and we can see that the uh, 
that transmitter generated a blockade is actually cut off the moisture from this jet stream flow right here. We can see that. They have effectively uh, cut off the moisture supply to this uh, vortex, that storm. All right, let's look at the uh, western U.S. water vapor loop. We can see high pressure starting to set up we, uh, the uh, evaporation here. That's evident. You can see that uh, transmitter right here cutting off the uh, moisture field into uh, that storm. Also, we have something trying to spin right here off of uh, Mexico, right over Mexico. If we go back to the big map, uh, right here we have a low pressure trying to spin. Same thing over uh, Hawaii. I wanted to mention that as well. Right out here over Hawaii, or just near the big island, we have something here trying to spin up. But we see that there's high pressure installed, and that will uh, prevent anything out here from uh, feeding this vortex and strengthening this system here. These will not build unless there's any moisture. Uh, you know, if they, if they have a transmitter on top of this low pressure, it will not develop. And that's what we, we, we see that uh, all the time. Same thing's going on over here. Okay, uh, here's the rainbow map for the western U.S. We can see what's happening here. And we do have some moisture moving into uh, central and southern California, and that may be uh, why these uh, jets were out spraying, is to uh, mop up any uh, atmospheric moisture and to prevent uh, any rain. Okay, we saw that. Uh, here is Alaska. We can see some of these odd geometric straight edges. We have a, a right angle right here, and we have several uh, straight edges right along this uh, the inside of this frontal system. Now, you would expect, looking at these maps, that there'd be uh, quite a bit of rain falling over uh, Anchorage and, and right along in this area of Alaska. Well, looking at the, uh, the IntelliCast map, let's take a look at that. Looking at uh, Anchorage, Alaska, there's not a whole lot of rain showing up on the return. So I would guess that uh, the people uh, living in uh, Alaska right along this area are probably getting sprayed pretty pretty intensely by uh, the jets. And we can see only a few returns of rain uh, in this area of Alaska. So uh, anybody up there in Alaska, if you're seeing this report, let us know uh, if you saw a lot of chemtrails in the skies because that, that would I'm, guess, I'm guessing, I'm betting that there probably was a lot based on what we're seeing here with these Alaska maps. Okay, so we can see the manipulation going on. We have these odd uh, right angles and triangle, straight edges and so forth. All right, here's the uh, SSEC map. And... Uh, we can see what's happening here over Hawaii. We've got a low pressure system trying to spin up. And uh, this will be uh, killed off here within a day or so. That is probably uh, bringing some weather to the big island. We've got two 14,000 foot mountains right there on that one island. Okay. Um, let's pan over here. We can see some chemtrails being laid out in this area sprayed and we have a, a disturbance developing right uh right down here this is the one that has a 20 percent chance of hurricane formation right over here and then we have this other area of low pressure right over mexico trying to develop let's map over a little bit see that area of low pressure trying to spin now if we pan up a little bit uh, we have the jet stream, and there's a lot of chemtrails being sprayed uh, as this flow moves into California. We can see that right here. All right, and we have the, the storm right up here, and we can see that there's very little, uh, there's no rotation right here, and there should be. There should be a, a nice tight spiral like you would see on the top of a seashell. You can see there's none of that here. It's just a, a because they've got heat. We got RF energy focusing right in this area, and that's causing all this distortion and uh, counterclock, or rather clockwise rotation. All right. Here is the uh, National Hurricane Center map uh, information for the uh, for the East Coast. We have a new disturbance right here, just north of uh, Jamaica and Haiti, with an eighty or sixty percent chance 
of uh, hurricane formation. Just down a few here, right here, sixty percent chance. So we'll keep an eye on that, and that could affect the United States once again. Keep a close eye on that. Uh, over here on the uh, East uh, Pacific, we have two disturbances. One with a 20% chance, and then we have another one over here with a 10% chance. These are both, this one here has been hit repeatedly with microwave, and so they've knocked it down from a 40% chance down to 20%. So we'll keep an eye on all that. Uh, these people uh, can control the weather, as I've mentioned many times. They can allow these uh, these uh, vortexes to spin up within 24 hours into a Category 4 storm, or they can completely blow them apart with a microwave. It's totally in their hands. We've been documenting that now for over a year, almost a year and a half. Okay, here's the northwest Atlantic water vapor loop. We can see a, a, this area here. This is that, where that uh, disturbance was identified. We can see a vortex here trying to spin. And uh, we'll keep an eye on all that. Everything is moving uh, to the uh, east. Everything over the uh, southeast is pretty much cleared out. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't... Uh, expect any chemtrail spraying in this area but if there is uh, let us know put a put a note up on the on the forum okay so the pressure maps we have a half a map tonight uh, we can see that there's high pressure installed right off the uh, california coast that's nothing new about that that's man-made high pressure and that's going to block uh, this developing storm which is uh, would otherwise bring rain it would sweep down like it used to in the old days in the 70s and 80s, these uh, fronts would just sweep down and we get about three days worth of rain. That would happen in the fall all the way through till March and April. Every year, we have typically in the foothills, we'd have you know between 15 and 20 inches of rain, sometimes more than that, 25 inches of rain every year. And now we're getting uh, anywhere you know between six and a half and 15. We had 15 last year. And uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Here's the 500 millibar map. We see the low up here we, in the jet stream moving into California. We've got a high indicated over here and low pressure right here where that vortex is spinning. Here's the 300 millibar map. We see the uh, jet stream flow moving in. Got the low pressure here, upper level low. Okay, so that's the report. Um, leave it here and uh, do another update tomorrow.